Now, a voice of hope from foreign land regarding the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria's northeast, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who was in Meduguri, Bornu State's capital, to visit rehabilitation center victims of insurgency and internally displaced persons camp, said Boko Haram will soon disappear. The UN scribe said the insurgents have already been weakened. Mayor, I don't coming from I don't, the United I don't agree Nations, with him. I don't agree with him at all. But it's a very, very um, welcome development that the Secretary General comes because what he does is that he will be able to channel funds to the IDP camps. You know, basically that is that is the significance of his visit to be able to see for himself. You understand? Because he was moving around to and then tried to look at how the raise funds. You know, because part of the problem of the Ukraine, Russia Ukraine war is that it's, yeah, yeah, it's, like, yes, it's, it's a major in event now in Europe yeah. and it's eating deep into the budget for other IDP camps that they've been funding and they're trying to com convince other countries to be able to contribute more to that pool. So it's important for the Secretary General if it, to do me free to come to us to be able to see for himself the state of our IDP camps and that will will be able to afford us to be able to get more funding for that. Yes, I agree that we have made significant progress in the Northeast. There's no doubt about that, for different reasons. Um, the, the, the terrorists are not as strong as they used to be. But for us to say that they will soon be a thing of the past and they'll be weakened, it's, it's optimism, optimism that all of us pray that it should be so. But I don't think that is the reality on that. I think as Secretary General of the United Nations, you might have gotten a kind of security briefing. As no, might have been I think that, I think that um, some of what he was told when he went there indicates clearly that Boko Haram is dying. Uh, some of them are moving up. They are moving to the northwest. They are moving to the north central. They are really, really facing hell. Their attacks have gone down drastically. Although we must not be complacent, we must not deceive ourselves that, oh, the end has come. Boko Haram will certainly die at some point. It will come to an end at some point. In my view, given this progress that we have made, the Tucanos, the unmanned area vehicles, they are doing a tremendous job in the northeast. I just returned from the northeast a couple of days back. I'm from Maiduguri. And I can tell you that, look, the place is safer. The reports, the usual constant reports of attacks on military bases and all that have gone down. Even attacks on civilian populations have gone down. But at the same time, we have to bear in mind that is an insurgency, and by the nature of insurgencies, uh, you, you cannot simply come to con the conclusion that, oh, those guys, that they will soon disappear. I swap just some days back, killed eight villagers in a village called Kaltihari near Chibok. They also destroyed a military base that was there. They set it up, a small military base that was there. So, and even as we speak, there are still some people unaccounted for in that attack. Yes, that, you could say that that attack um, is something that didn't, that, that just happened against the grain. We had not been hearing of this kind of attacks for some time, and, but suddenly this one happened. It should tell us that we have to be more um, we have to be very, very uh, determined. We have to be vigilant because this we are dealing with an enemy that is dangerous. I'm happy with the visit of the UN uh, Secretary General because she also talked about the need for um, the, um, the IDP camps and the camps of even the, the, uh, the boys who have... Uh, what do we call them? The so-called repentant terrorists. Mm -hmm. He visited their camp mm -hmm. as well. You know, 
So he is of the view that we need to provide more incentive and make the humanitarian, the camps more conducive. Mm -hmm. Humanitarian workers in Borno State will tell you that, look, yes, the governor is relocating people to uh, their villages because of improved security. But they will tell you that it is not safe yet mm -hmm. to send every IDP back, back to their... To it, you can, you can relocate to mm -hmm. some, mm -hmm. but certainly not all. And the fear of these guys remains. It's not as if that the threat posed by them has been obliterated. Yes, we have made a tremendous improvement. We have to admit that. But the enemy remains. The enemy remains dangerous. And we have to just keep working hard until victory, the definitive victory is attained. Mm. Mia, when you, so when you now look at it, ultimately, because we... The strength of the Nigerian military and they've been over time and from what we are seeing now. So for the UN to, to talk like that, that means there's a, a kind of a considerable imp improvement. Yes. But some will be of the opinion that these guys, they've left that region. That, that, that is the, that's the thing. We, we, we have to ask ourselves the question. A lot of factors accounted for what is happening in the Northeast. One, ISWAP is still very strong. But Boko Haram faction, led by Shekau, is not as strong as it used to be for different reasons. You know, when, when, you, when you lose the head of a, of a group, when you lose the head, and a lot of the commanders don't want to go to Israel because they will not be, they will not be in the kind of position they used to be. A lot of them have moved away and moved into banditry. Some of these people, some of these bandits that is terrorizing the Northwest and the, and the North Central. Some of them are remnants of Boko Haram. Mm. Second, our, because of the better equipment, we'll be able to take the fight to them. So a lot of them, you know, they have, have moved away and all that. But the problem with insurgency is that the, the theater of war is not defined. Mm. It's not defined. Because it is not defined, after some time, you will overpower them they will melt into different hills and places, and then they will regroup and start attacking you again. You understand? So that's why it takes a long time. Even superpowers like America could not defeat it in, 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 in Afghanistan for a long time. You know, because the total war is not defined. So it's not as if they are in this territory, immediately you take that territory and dominate that territory, they are gone. No. They are highly mobile. So it takes time. You, would, you, would, you destroy their uh, infrastructure. They, they, they lie low for some time, try to regroup, and then they come back again. But we have, done, we have done better than, we have done relatively well. And we hope that, but we should not, we should, yes, it is, it is good for us to believe that they will disappear, but they have not disappeared. They are still there. It's, just that, they are, it's just that Atlantic... You, know, you said something on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You were talking about um, the infighting between these people that, mm -hmm. that's uh, responsible for even uh, you know, ah, the re reduction of the activity that they are facing. The, the, the Israel guys are facing the Shekau guys head on now. Yes, the Shekau guys too are killing them. Hmm. It's not um, the way it is. It's not as if all the time it's ice swap that is uh, gaining upper hand. Hmm. What Abu Musab Banawi did to Shekau by taking his men to go and surround his base, hmm. and Shekau felt that look, if we are just in law, it's better I take my own life. He used the suicide belt to kill himself. Then Shekau's loyalists, some of who fled to Northern Cameroon, came back mm. and took the battle to Abu Musab al Banawi's base mm. and shot him. He, he died from the injury that he sustained. Mm. Banawi? So, yes, al Banawi is gone. Mm. He died from the injury that he sustained. So, so there's infighting between these. They constantly, even, even till last week, they still attack one another inside the Sambisa camp. So they are making the you work know, easy for us. ISWAP wanted to take control of um, the Sambisa forest because that's where Shekau occupied for some time. 
if you have control of Sambisa Forest, you, it's like you have everything. It's so big, it's so difficult to track you down. But as uh, ISWAP on its own, they were largely holed up in the Chad islands Bizzle. of uh, Lake Chad and the, uh, the area called Timbuktu Triangle. Some parts of Dambua, and some, yes, mm -hmm. they are strongholds over a long time. Aj uh, Ajigi, all of those places that they've, they've, they've held on to for some time. So now, since they've kept themselves busy by killing one another, fighting one another, trying to gain control, that is, it plays into the hands of the military because the military will be happy where they are now that, look, we found a way to sow seeds of discord among these people, and they're killing one another. The military didn't have to kill Shekau. It's the Albanawi people that killed him. The military didn't have to kill Albanawi, though they've been chasing him for years. It's the Shekau people that took his life. So all of these things, they are in disarray, but you know they are also determined. So it's not as if they've given up at all. I just gave you this example of what happened near Chibok. You will expect that, ah, why are they still killing people in Chibok? Mm -hmm. So even after those two leaders were killed, they still carried out some attacks. So we cannot relent. Mm -hmm. We should just continue. Let the investment in uh, weapons uh, for the military continue. Let the inter intelligence gathering uh, assets be activated. Let uh, them continue to get information that can be useful in dealing with these guys. And then even their infiltration of other parts of the country. We don't want them to continue to spread their tentacles to other parts of the country. We also need to find a way to stop that. If we saw them, they moved to Niger State, we didn't stop them. And from Niger now, they've moved to uh, the Northwest and some, uh, some parts of Abuja, the FCT. That's places like Abaji and know that. So we just need to uh, work harder to leave them, confine them to that area where they are mm. and obliterate them in the final analysis. Yeah. All right.